Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to be going down into the flower patches and having a look at collecting some flower seeds. This is a fantastic thing to do at this time of year. It's September now and we've got some lovely dry weather which is perfect for saving some seed. It's really simple to collect seeds. You really don't need a lot of equipment to do it. So all we're going to need is I've got a pair of snips here. You can use scissors or secateurs. I've got some paper bags here as well and I've got some markers. Just need a pen of some kind to write on your paper bags and envelopes what seeds you have harvested. And I've got some envelopes here as well which you can use. The main thing is don't collect your seeds into plastic bags because these trap moisture and it can make your seeds go damp and mouldy. So stick with paper, either in paper bags like these or paper envelopes. So let's go around just now and have a look at some of the flowers that I think are ready today because that's the trick. It's knowing when the seeds are ripe enough to collect the flowers but not too far gone that they're at the stage where they're spilling all over your flower beds. So let's go and have a look just now at some of the flowers I've got in the flower patch. So I don't cut all my flowers in the flower patch. I do leave some at this time of year to set seed. So if you cut all the flowers, all your flowering stems, you wouldn't get any of these lovely seeds to collect. But if you just leave some flower heads on to go to the seed stage at the end of the flower season, then you'll get all these lovely flower seeds and you won't have to buy next year. And the best thing about today is it's a nice sunny day for collecting seeds. So you really do want to collect seeds in the dry weather. So that would be my next tip is to collect seeds only when it's dry weather outside. Don't collect seeds in the rain. Also be careful at this time of year because if you're like my climate here, it is very cool, dewy in the morning and you have that little dew all over your flowers and it takes a few hours for that to dry up. So I would say it's only really getting to more towards midday and then into the afternoon before you could collect seed that's dry enough. And also it does cool down quite quickly in the evenings as well and things just feel a little bit damper. So I would say that you're definitely looking at midday afternoon seed collecting here in Scotland on a nice sunny day when everything has dried out. If you were to collect seed when it was damp or you'd gone early in the morning and it was a bit dewy then it just means that the seeds are prone to going mouldy. You want to store them really dry to prevent that from happening so that's why we collect it in nice dry weather. So we've got lots of docus over here and they're at varying stages in their seed production. So you can see here that we've got some that are fairly green and the stems are still green. So that is too immature yet for cutting for our seeds. We're looking for browner stems and we're looking for brown seeds. So over here we have got one that's got a brown stem and it's got some brown seeds on the flower head up here. And if you rub it you'll find that seeds start to come away in your hands you can see there so that shows that this one is a good one for cutting and you can just cut off the entire flower head and pop it into your paper bag and then you'll be able to take the seeds off at a stage inside so here we are in a patch of the garden where I've let some Orlea go to seed and you can see here that we've got a lovely brown stem here with lovely brown Orlea seeds on it. So I can just snip that off into a paper bag and that will be absolutely fine for collecting. Behind it you can see these ones that are green and they're just not quite mature yet. I would leave them a little bit longer until they turn brown before I collect them. So you can just snip it off at the top there. And just look at the lovely seeds on there that we'll be able to collect for sowing. So I'm going to pop that into my paper bag just now. So this here is Bapleurium and it's a fantastic one for collecting seed. And as you can see here, I've let this stem go to a brown stage. So the stems are brown and the old petals are brown and you can see these lovely dark seeds in here so they're kind of just about black the seeds and that's a perfect stage for cutting for putting in our envelope and you can cut again the whole of the head off there and then they will easily just crumble away those seeds they'll come out of the finished petals there into your bag and then you can just pop them out into the envelopes when you've got rid of all the chaff and the extra debris 
Now down here I've got an Igella seed pod. Now this is not at the stage yet where it is ready for collecting. Nigella is a fantastic one to collect the seeds from, but there is no split on the top there. It's still fairly coloured, it's not turned brown. So let's see if we can find one that's at a better stage for collecting. So here we go, this is a Nigella seed pod that is a perfect stage for collecting. You can see it's split on the top there and it's gone brown and you should just be able to see in there that it's dark in the centre there and that's all those lovely black seeds that are just ready to spill out of that Nigella pod so we're going to catch it in time before it disperses them and cut that into our paper bag. So that's a Nigella seed pod that's not ready for collecting and and that's a Nigella seed pod that is ready for collecting. Right, let's see what other flowers that are just finishing off that we can see. It's too early for the cosmos yet. Um, they're in full flower at the moment and some more just coming. So I'm just going to have to leave them a couple more weeks before letting any go to seed. So I've got lots of lovely hardy annuals that I am collecting flower seed from at the moment that have done the best of their flowering in the last few months and are slowing down. But there are some late flowering things like cosmos and scabies that are just getting into their stride just now. It seems too early to be able to let them go to seed. I'm using so many of those in florist buckets and things at the moment. But if I am wanting to get some seed from them then I would have to start letting them go to seed soon, at least on a few stems, because the weather will deteriorate as the weeks go on now. And if you haven't let any of your flowers get to the stage of creating seed heads yet, then I would let a few go just now. I would say this really is the optimum time for collecting seeds here in Scotland, mainly because our weather is so good at the moment. It's nice and dry, it's sunny, it's a great time for collecting. And I know a few weeks down the line, the weather will have changed, it will be cooler, um, we will get a dew lasting much longer on the flowers in the morning and it will be difficult to get them to a stage of drying off where they're not going to get mouldy. So this is a great time just now. If you're in the south of England or you are in other countries around the world, you may find that you have a much longer season that goes on for many more weeks before it gets cooler. And in that case, you have a much larger window for collecting seed. But if you're here based in Scotland, I would say just now in the next couple of weeks is the best time for collecting. Calendula is a fantastic one to get seed collected from. They're really good because they are really large seeds, so they're very easy to handle. Some of the other seeds that we have been looking at, like the Nigella and the Docus, they are much smaller. But these are lovely curved large seeds that should just come away in your hand when they're ready. So we've got some still flowering here, so we need to see if we can find any that are ready to collect yet. So when calendula go over they start to look like this. Now this is a stage which we're not ready to collect at because as you can see here everything is very green in the centre. You can see there that the petals have faded away but our seeds around here haven't matured, they haven't ripened yet. So we need to wait a little bit longer. So we'll see if we can find one that is ready. So this is a calendula that you can see is better for collecting the seeds. You can see all those lovely seeds just around there. So we can cut that one off and we can pop that into our bag. But that's really why we're collecting seeds as well. It's great to have all the self-seeding that can happen in your garden if you do just leave the flower heads on and let nature take its course. But in that case, you've got no control over where these seeds are going to germinate and where your new plants are going to pop up. Sometimes birds pick up the seeds and then distribute them elsewhere. Um, so you can really get random sunflowers, random calendula and things arriving in all sorts of parts of your garden or you can just get very disjointed patches down your flower beds where you'll get some self-seeded things. Um, so it's a lot easier to control where things are in your flower beds if you collect your own seeds and then sow them where you want them to be the following year. So this is a cornflower seed head. You can see it's nice and brown. It's an opened up at the top and you can just see there that that is a cornflower seed that's come out from in the middle of it. And if I just open it up just now, you'll see there's lots more cornflower seeds in there. 
So you can see all those lovely cornflower seeds there that have come out of that flower head. And it's much easier to deal with them inside actually. So I would just cut the flower heads off in the garden, pop them in your paper bags. And then when you get inside, you can tip them out onto a piece of paper or a tray. And then you can start to remove some of the debris and the chaff away from the seeds. And then just pop your seeds into a nice envelope and label it. So here's an example of a cornflower that is a seed head that has already opened up and started to disperse its seeds. So this is too late. By this stage, it's split like this. Then your cornflower seeds are going to be all over the ground as well. So you want to catch it at an earlier stage for collecting your own seed. You can just see there that there's a couple left in there, but you can see that a lot have already come out of this particular flower head. So this is a cornflower seed head and it hasn't opened up and dispersed its seed yet. So this is a good stage to be cutting that at. So I've been around the garden and got quite a few seeds collected now this afternoon. And you can see in here, there's lots of lovely Orlea in that bag there. So what I need to do now is I need to label the bag so I remember what seeds these are. So I'm just going to write on it just now. And I'm gonna write on there that we've got Orlea. And I'm gonna write on there as well the date, which is the 6th of September today. And that'll just remind me when I harvested it. And also I know the Aurelia is gonna be white because that's the variety and color it comes in. But if you've got things like cornflowers or nigella that come in different colors, then you might want to write on it the color of the flower that you have been harvesting. So I might write cornflowers, 6th of September, 2023, blue ball so that I know that that's where they came from and hopefully that would be the variety that you would get growing once you germinated your seeds for next year. Now that we've got lots of lovely seeds collected I'm going to take them inside just now and it doesn't matter if you can't do this immediately and um, just in the next week or so or even in a couple of days if you've got the time you're going to take your paper bags of seeds and you're going to tip them out onto a piece of paper and you're going to sort through them so we've got these on our stalks just now so we want to get the individual seeds off that so that we can pop them in our envelopes and store them over the winter time. You can of course sow some just now because it's hardy annual sowing time in September so if you want to get some straight on then you can um, definitely sow things like your early and your cornflowers and things just now as well. So let's go inside and have a look at what I'm going to do with these seeds. So we've got all of our lovely seed back inside and I've just laid some of them out here on a piece of card so that you can see them. So we've got Dorcas here, this is our Buplerium, we've got Aurelia, Calendula, Nigella and Cornflower seed pods. And at the moment you can see that we've got them attached to some of their stems and they're all together and they're not separated out yet. So that's the next job is to go and separate them out from their seed pods into individual seeds that you can then pop away and store in your nice paper envelopes. So I'm just going to go and get a piece of white paper and I'll pull them across individually and have a sort of them. So white paper is great for doing this on because you can see the seeds really clearly and that makes the job a lot easier. And you can just fold the paper up like this with the seeds in the middle at the end and then pour them into your envelope and that makes things quite easy there as well so you're not losing any seeds. So I'm just going to start off by writing the names of the seeds on the envelopes to start with um, because that is easier than trying to write once you've got the seeds in there. And we're just going to put the date today, which is the 6th of September. And we've just put Orlea there. If it was a cornflower or a corn cockle that was a particular colour, then I would write that down as well. But my Orlea are all white, so I don't need to write that on this one. And now I'm going to go and see if I can get these nice seeds off onto my piece of paper. So that our layer, they just break off those stems very easily, just like that. Just be careful with the Aurelia because they are slightly spiky seeds. If they weren't ready to harvest, they wouldn't come away this easily. Um, you would find if they were at that green stage that they were clinging on there and not ready to come off. But these are just coming away really easily in my hands there. So that is my empty flower head now. 
And these are all my individual seeds that are off it. You can see that there's a little bit of debris that is there. So these are quite large seeds. I can just pick them off and pop them onto another piece of paper and just slide them all into the envelope at the same time. Or you can just pick them up individually and pop them in your envelope just so that you don't get that debris in there with them. So that's my seeds all there without any of the debris or chaff and they can just be poured into my envelope now. So that's them all ready in there and I can just tuck that envelope together like that. Now I'm going to store these in a metal seat tin that I've got. So that's my seeds for my Aralea in my tin there and they'll just get stored in a nice dry cupboard in the dark until I want to sow them. And you could sow them just now because it is autumn time and that is a good time for sowing some of our hardy annuals. Um, but you can store them for a few months in there and then sow them in the late winter, um, early spring next year and keep using them for your succession sowings then. In terms of viability, the best germination will be within that first year of saving them, but you will find that you will get some germination in subsequent years if you've stored them well. It's just your germination rates will decline and it just won't be as much of a high percentage success rate that you will get. Um, so they will remain viable, but the best year is going to be that first one when they're nice and fresh. So the next seeds I've got are these nice Bapleerium here and they are all in their flower head there. So we'll need to see if we can get some of those out just now. So these Bapleerium seeds will just shake out of here as well. You can see them just coming out very easily falling out if you just rub them like this. You might have a little sieve at home that you find it quite good to get rid of some of the chaff and debris that you can just tip these all into in a minute, especially when you get to the smaller seeds. But I'll just show you what this looks like. So that's our empty flower head there. And that's just one flower head. And just look at all these seeds that we've managed to get from that. Think of all the Bapleerium plants that you'll be able to grow from those next year. It's absolutely fantastic. So really worthwhile saving your own seed. And you can see there that there's some little bits of chaff in amongst there like this. You don't want them. So you can just move your seeds over to the side and get them into a little pile without any of the chaff. And then we'll be able to tip them into our envelope so we don't need that bit over there. So that's all the chaff and debris from the Bapleerium seeds and this is my Bapleerium seeds over here. So I can just take this out of the way and then fold this bit of paper to get my Bapleerium into their envelope. There we go, that's my Bapleerium in their envelope. So they can get folded over as well and then stored in my tin until ready to use. Let's go and have a quick look at some of the other seeds that we've got here as well. So these are our calendula seeds here. You can see that they're quite large and they're curved as well. So they're quite obvious when you take them off the flower heads. That's the debris from those. And what have we got over here? So look at these lovely cornflower seeds. These have come away from this one flower head here. So I've just broken it apart and then all these lovely cornflower seeds have fallen out here. So we'll be able to sow them just now actually because of it is autumn and cornflowers are brilliant if they are sown in the autumn and over winter. They come back really strong the following year. So I'm going to be excited to do that in the next couple of days. So over here, I've just got my piece of paper, my A4 paper. I'm just going to fold it down the middle. And then I'm going to open it out and I'm going to get my Nigella seed pod here. Now you can see here that it's split at the top and we just need to break it open gently like that. And some of the seeds are already starting to come out. I'll show you that just now. So I've broken that apart a little bit and if you just tip it upside down, seeds will start to come out. But you might find that you need to break it apart a little bit more to see if there's any still inside. So there you are, I've just split that a little bit more down. You can see all those little black seeds there, which should just all pour out. And there's a few more still stuck in there. Might just need to use your fingers to get the last ones out, like that. Oh, there's still one there, that's it, gone. So just check that it's all empty, both sides, you might need to split it round 
on this side as well, I'll just check that too. Isn't that incredible? That is one nigella flower that we had there. That's a seed pod that was created from it that I have broken up there to tip out all those seeds. And that is all the seeds there that we have got from that one flower head. So just think of all those nigella that you're gonna be able to sow and get new plants from next year. It's really exciting. It's just one of the best things about seed collecting. And I haven't quite got all of the chaff away from there in the debris. I've got most of it out. And I'm not too fussed about that. I don't mind having a little bit in my envelope. But if you are seed swapping with friends, then you might want to try and clean them up a little bit more. And you could pop them through a little sieve if you've got one. And um, that might help separate it out. Or you can just tease it away there like that. You can get those extra bits away. So let's get these in their envelope just now. So I've just popped on there, Nigella, the date, and I've popped that these ones are white ones because I knew they were white ones from the garden um, because Nigella comes in lots of different colours, so that just helps keep me right. So I'm just going to get those in their envelope just now. Pick our seeds up from here. It's pre-folded so it's nice and easy to go in. There we go. Lots of Nigella seeds in there. And I'll add probably a few more nigella into there because I've got a few more pods to go through and then we'll have quite a lot of seeds in our one envelope. You don't need to use as big envelopes as these as just what I had in the house, but you can get much smaller envelopes that are maybe a little bit easier um, to store seeds in, especially if they're tiny. So this is Dorcas. These really curve around and have loads and loads of little seeds on them. And Amy's kind of similar to this as well. And when you get the seed head inside, you can just basically rub away with your fingers like this and the seeds just all fall off onto the paper below they just come away so you just keep doing that and um, you could find that if you just um, pop this directly into some brown paper bags and you just left it for a few weeks in a nice dry spot then they would all just naturally fall off as well things like nigella seed pods as well they can quite often just further dry up and all of the seeds just naturally drop off so you can avoid this whole stage here if you want to by just letting that process occur naturally in the brown paper bag and then when you come to filter them out and pop them into the envelopes it's a little bit easier in a couple of weeks time but if you're keen to get on, then this is what you can do. You can just rub all the seeds off there and I'll show you what they look like. So that's our Dorcas seeds there. If you have got some seeds that you've taken inside from the garden, so for example, your Dorcas seed heads like this, and you just touch them and you feel like that they're slightly damp, you don't feel like they're completely dry, then what I would do is I would just get a tray and I would lay them all out so that they're not all piled up on top of each other. And I would put them in a nice dry, warm place for a few days to dry out before you then go and package them all up in their envelopes and make sure they're completely dry before you do that stage otherwise they'll just go moldy and then they'll not be viable seeds for you so just be absolutely sure that they're totally dry once you get to that stage of sorting through them and then storing them. So the seeds that I am collecting this year that we've looked at today are Dorcas, Buplerium, Nigella, Cornflowers. There's other ones as well in the garden, things like um, your Scabious, Cosmos. Those kind of things are annuals that are flowering really well for me at the moment. So I'm going to keep letting them flower for the next couple of weeks. And then when it's getting to the stage where they're starting to slow down, at that point, I will let a few go to seed and I'll see if the conditions are right. I can collect some of those seed then. So many other things that you might want to collect seed from too. If you're good at growing zinnias, um, that's something I'm still working on. The conditions are just not great for that here. But if you have lots of zinnias, they're a fantastic one to collect seed from. Um, other things as well, like nasturtiums you might be able to get. Cerinthi is a nice one to collect seed from. They're really large seeds, so um, they're a good one to do. I mean, Magis is another one that I might try and get some seeds from later. Rodolphia, they just need to go around your garden and have a look and see what you can see from your annuals and see what you can collect. And it's such an amazing thing to do to get to have that stage of sowing your seeds in the autumn in 2022 or in late winter, early spring of 2023, having them flower all summer long, letting some of them go to seed at the end of the season and being able to collect that for your new flowers in 2024. That's a really amazing thing to be able to do. So I hope you enjoy having a shot at it yourselves.